So in this example, if I want to do q to p, well now q is my initial point, right? And p is my terminal point. So now I got to rearrange this. Now this is going to be p1 minus q1, and this is going to be p2 minus q2. Right? You're subtracting your terminal point from your initial point. Correct? So everything really kind of gets switched around. So this is really negative 3 minus 1, comma, negative 1 minus 3. And when I do negative 1 minus a negative 3, if you don't be careful with your parentheses, they will get you. No. Crap. What is this? Let me just rewrite this. So q1 is p1 is negative 3. Yeah, it's a positive. Thank you. All right, so therefore, this ends up being a negative 4, comma, positive 4. Let's go and graph this in standard form. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? Now, do you guys agree that's kind of like the same vector here? It's really just like this vector right there. Like, it's just the same vector now in the opposite direction, right? And again, from q to p, doesn't that look like that works? Yes? Now again, we can find the magnitude, which would be very easy, right? The magnitude is just going to be, um, so the magnitude of q, p is just going to be negative 4 squared plus 4. Oh, I forgot to even go through this. This would be squared of 32. You guys want to know the good news? For this chapter, simplifying is not really going to algebraically be an advantage for us. So therefore, you guys can just leave your answer just like that. Don't need to simplify the radical. Okay, Just leave it as it is. Um, obviously, if I ask you to round, then you'd want to use your calculator since you'll have access to your calculator. Um, but that's perfectly fine. Now, let's go and find the angle. What is the angle of this vector here? Well, we know inside this triangle, we already have 45 degrees, right? So we know from here to here is 45 degrees. But is that what we'd say the angle of the vector is, is 45 degrees? No, because we need to talk about it from standard form, which is from here to there. Right? So what is that angle? Does anybody know? Angle of the vector. Well, from here to here is 45 degrees. From there to there is 180. 135. Theta equals 135 degrees. So now, why is it on the outside of it? Like, why are you? The angle, standard form, starts here. Yeah. Standard form always starts here, and you've got to rotate from there. Well, we know that from here to here. It's 45 degrees, though 180 minus 45 is 135. So you're just measuring to the like, outside of the To the angle, form? yeah. Because oh, okay. um, standard form always starts at the positive angle. Yeah. One last question I'll remind you guys is what if you don't know 45, what if we, like this was easy 45 degrees because we knew the side lengths were the same. But guys, what if we didn't know? Like what if we only had these measurements? Which, what would I want to use to find that, um, to find the angle? Like, let's, let's say we didn't know 45 degrees. Or let's just kind of go from here. Like, how do we find this angle? Let's, like, pretend you have a random vector. If I want to find the angle of that vector, let's call it alpha. How do you find the angle of that vector? Half to 90 is 45. Well, if you look at this in component form, here's v1 comma v2. Here's v1, here's v2. The tangent of alpha, where I wrote right there, tangent of alpha is equal to opposite over adjacent. So you're basically just taking your components, um, basically taking your components to find the angle. But again, remember guys, it depends on what quadrant it's in. Just don't find the angle in the triangle and say, that's my angle. Because as we noticed, if it's in the fourth quadrant, it's negative, right? Or you could use the positive version. And then also, if it's in the second quadrant, you guys see you got to subtract that from 180. So you got to understand which quadrant it's in. So when you guys get back from lunch, we'll do some example problems uh, for you guys. What positive answer? Yeah. Yeah, so you could do 45 minus, so that'd be 315. 